In the hustle and bustle of our everyday lives, it's so easy to feel captive to the demands and pressures all around us, to feel confined by so many things to think about at once. In Galatians chapter 5, we read, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. We're called to stand fast, be faithful, run a good race, serve others, be filled and led by the Holy Spirit. This is freedom. This is the gospel of freedom. Hopefully we recover, but genuinely I want you to start by praying uh, for all, all those of you who are at home right now uh, with to have tested uh, COVID positive. I just thank God for the vaccine. Father God, I just bless you that you blessed us with a vaccine that means that we can get this virus and it doesn't destroy us. Um, and I just want to pray uh, 3 John 2 over everybody uh, and hear my voice who's tested positive at the moment, might be feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well. So for those who get captured in COVID positive, let it be short-lived. So a very uh, warm and special welcome to you. If you're here for the very first time or if you're watching online for the first time, I pray that you'll very much feel at home here at Harvest because we want this to be a home that is going to um, impart hope to you. Uh, that's really what my aspiration is. So, uh, as we come to the very final one in this series, we're landing on the last two verses of Galatians chapter 5, which are verses 25 and 26, and they simply say this, since we live by the Spirit, which was last week's message, remember Heather said, let's walk with the Spirit, let's live with the Spirit, uh, let us keep in step with the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. That's the two kind of like little bits that's there. And I'm really going to focus on this idea, this concept here, that now that you're with God's Spirit, since you live by the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit. So, what is that saying to me? It's saying to me that there's two things happening here, isn't there? That we can be good and godly people, and of course you all are, but we can still step closer to Jesus. We can still get closer to His Holy Spirit than we have ever been before. Can have an amen for that, because that is uh, full of hope. Now, of course, the second verse, 26, let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other, is all double negatives. So, if you and I did this for you, save you a bit of brain work. If we uh, flip those double negatives and translate it, it comes up as this. The pink words are the words that I've put in here. So, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And here's the positive of the flip of those negative things. Let us be humble, modest, egoless, encouraging, and generous with each other. Now, Heather covered a lot of that last week, so, but we, we will just touch it as we go. So, I think that these final verses are very relational. They speak about our relationship with God's Spirit, and obviously they speak about our relationship with each other, uh, and these are essential relationships. Um, but here is my vision and my hope for us um, this message. It's a message of breakthrough. It's a message of change. It's a message for us to step forward and up in our walk with Jesus. Let me have an amen for that if you're, if you're with that. Okay, because we are a holy people, but we can live even closer to the Holy Spirit. And we can actually, and there's a wonderful phrase here, we can actually keep in step with His will and His purpose in our lives. Isn't that awesome? We don't need to be wandering around figuring out what we should be doing. We don't need to be wandering about confused about what God's plan and purpose for our life is. We don't need to be a church that has to have tons of meetings all the time thinking well, what are we supposed to be doing this week. No, we don't need any of that because we are people individually and as a corporate church that can get close to God's Spirit and get keep in step with His will and his purpose. I'm excited about that prospect. You see, when you partner with God, you're partnering with everything that he is. So, for example, when you partner with goodness, you breathe goodness. So, if you want to be gooder, get close to God. I'm not, I'm not sure gooder is a word. <laughs> um, when you partner 
With God, you partner with power. And so you can do much more than you could ever dream or imagine because you're walking with Him. When you partner with God, you're partnering with His compassion. You receive, the Bible says we can receive a new heart. God says He'll take our heart of stone and He'll give us a heart of flesh. But what He means by that is we'll have a heart of compassion for other people. So, you want to be more loving. You don't need to study more. You don't need to try harder. You just have to get closer to God. Because as you get closer to God, all that He is will become in you. When you partner with hope, your horizon changes. So, I want to focus on this invitation to get to know God in a new and fresh way that will take us above if, it's, if, it's, if there's any of this in us, it's going to take us above this. It's going to take us above lifeless, religious cliches and practices that might be in our lives and take us into a new realm. We're talking about a different realm, not a pumped up, better version of what we've got now. We are actually talking about a new realm. We're talking about the kingdom of God. God's Spirit, when He leads us and we keep in step with Him, we are stepping into a new realm. We are stepping into a kingdom of of God realm. You think, well, what's that all about? Get close to God, and He'll explain it to you. Whatever our place with God, whether, you know, you're listening to me, and you wouldn't even call yourself a Christian, well, hopefully, this will encourage you to be thinking about that, or whether you've been a Christian five years, 10 years, 15, 20, 25, 35, 45, give me an advance from 45, any advance from 45, there must be somebody in here, there's somebody with 50, there's somebody with 55, there's somebody watching online with 70 years experience, but it doesn't matter whether it's five or 75, you can know Jesus more by getting close and keeping in step with His Spirit than you've ever done. I love that. I absolutely love it, that we'll never run out of growth space with Him. We can always get closer to Him. Those of you who know me will know that I'm motivated by being practical. Uh, You know, we want words to be something that we can apply in our life. So, what does it mean to keep in step with the Holy Spirit of God? Keep in step with the Holy Spirit, it means to come close to God come close to God. Now, the word that's used in this text, keep in step, is a military word. It's the word that's used of soldiers marching, and you've seen it, haven't you? I I don't know if you've ever done it, um, but um, you need somebody shouting, left, right, left, right, boy, the left, right, left, quick, march, left, right, turn around, stop, pick yourself up, go back into step, and somebody is doing that, all the time. And if they're not shouting it like a sergeant major, there's a drummer who's beating on the drum. So they say, by the left, quick, and somebody's beating a drum and we're going to keep in step. And if there's not somebody shouting it, and if there's not somebody beating a drum, there's somebody wiggling a stick at the front. Okay, uh, I don't know what they call him, a drum major, I think it is, isn't he? He's got a stick and he's going, here we go, left, right, on we go, wavy stick. When I wave the stick to the left, you put your left foot forward and you don't do any dancing or you'll end up in a complete heap. So you get, that's the word, that's the meaning of the word. Now, I know, I I wish I could be more theological about all of this, but that is the depth, that is the the core of what it says here. It's keeping in step with the Holy Spirit of God and He is the one who has a heartbeat that calls us left, right, left, right, keep in step with God. Him. Now, if you've ever done any marching and got out a step, uh, you ever, ever had that kind of thing when you were in the BB or the guides or whatever? Uh, I was in the Salvation Army for quite a long time, so in the early years of the Salvation Army, we did a lot of marching about with drums and all that kind of stuff, which was great. Uh, but very, you ever tried playing a trumpet and keeping in step? Okay, so what you end up with, okay, and this is not a pretty sight, actually, is you're playing away and all that, and your legs get the wrong way around, right? Everybody's taking left, and you're stepping right, and you have to do a wee kind of funny kind of jiggle. You have to do two steps in one, or one really long one to try and get yourself back in step, but it's very distressing to be in that kind of position. And so I speak to you, to your hearts, If right at this moment you're thinking, well, actually, my life, my spiritual life is kind of out of step. You know, when I hear about keeping in step with the Holy Spirit, the first thing I I hear is I need something to change. I'm going to come back to that. For some of us, it will be a little jiggle, you know, just a wee jiggle, and we'll be back in step. We'll be keeping in step. For others of us, we've been listening to the beat of a different drum. 
And so there's a big change for us. You know, what's been direct in our life and given us the kind of beat, if you like, is not being God's Holy Spirit. And it's quite a major change has to happen there. Is that okay so far? Yeah, I hope you're following uh, what, uh, what I'm thinking. So, we are to keep in step with the Holy Spirit. Last week, Heather spoke to verse 16, which encouraged us to live by the Holy Spirit. And so, Paul is now encouraging us to keep close in with God. Uh, and I was praying, I've been praying for a couple of weeks um, for a deeply theological example of this, and God only gave me a very practical one, uh, and I hope so. Therefore, I've, I sense it's from God for me, and I'm, I'm going to share it with you. Going back to this walking imagery again, what does it mean to, uh, to walk with the Spirit and to keep in step with Him? There's, there's two things there. So, what I was kind of thinking was, imagine you go for a walk in Strathclyde Park, Okay. There's a, there's a bit of a lake and a walk around there. So, you go there, and you're going to go for a walk. And so, you want a friend to go with you. Now, that friend can be walking with you in a number of ways, okay? On the least connected way, you, you set out on the walk yourself, and you get your friend on video. Uh, you got them on WhatsApp or something like that, and you're having a wee chat with them, and you say, oh, look, I'm at the park. Here we are. We're walking around. So, technically, you could just about say that they're on walk with you. They don't have to keep in step because they're just sitting on their sofa or something doing that. And, and you get this kind of idea. And then there's different other levels in which the person can be connected. So, if someone actually turns up to go with a walk with you, uh, they might walk at a different pace than you. You're walking, you're kind of just doing your walk. And they have got their hands in their pockets and they're walking at a different pace. And you, you, have you ever had that where either they're too fast or they're usually too slow, and you're just kind of like hanging about half the time. So, they're walking with you, but they're not keeping in step with you. So, let's say that, you know, they're quite friendly, so they come up and they link arms with you. You see that quite often, don't you, friends? They kind of link arms, and uh, they, they get off walking together. Um, obviously, that, that, that keeps the step a bit more, doesn't it? Because you can't get ahead of them, you can't get behind them, because you're hooked up to them. I'll take it another level. Remember at school, doing the three-legged race, right? You got a, usually a friend, because it's paired up, and you get somebody who's your friend, and you take, one of you has to take your tie off, and you tie it around your leg, and you've got your arms around the shoulder. There's a lot of smiles in the room, so you remember this, don't you? And then you, uh, you get all lined up, and then somebody says, go, and you have to, you have to be in step, don't you? Uh, a lot of you have been hurt by that, I can tell, <laughs> just by looking around you. That moment when you shout, go, and your partner is half asleep, and you're trying to get your leg where you're tied together. So anyway, when you get going, when you get going, there's a very definite almost unnatural rhythm, isn't there, of being together if you're going to be successful. So, you, you get this kind of sense of going on and going on. But there's another level of keeping in step. And I see it with my grandkids. I don't know if you've ever had to do this. My, my children love this, and it turns out that my grandkids love this. When you get a, uh, the, the kids are not in the room at the moment, otherwise I get a little one to come out. And you get them and you say, do you want to walk with granddad or daddy? And they come forward and they put a foot on each of my feet. You ever done that? And you do that kind of funny thing. Any, anybody ever done that with their kids or whatever? I think everybody has, haven't they? And there's no, that, this is the most intimate keeping in step ever isn't it? They're not, they're not on a walk with you and dragging them, you're dragging them behind. They are following your every step. And my experience of that has been there's such a lot of joy in that moment. The kids just love it. And you, your legs don't love it the next day, but you get that kind of thing. So, th here is the picture. I hope you're following this. You can go from, yeah, I'm out on a walk with you, but I'm only on video, and I'm not even keeping on step, right through all of those tears, right to the very intimate every step that the, the parent, if you like, takes, the child is doing it exactly the same. Now, what's this got to do with us? I think that keeping in step with the Spirit is a choice that we have to make about what level are we wanting to be in terms of closeness to God and the Spirit. And you say, well, I, I can't choose. Well, yes, you can. We can choose how we are going to be engaged. We're going to choose to make it a priority to, and I'm going to give you some examples in a second or two, of come close to God and let Him be a help to you. So, you see, for at one level, this sounds complicated, but we need to remember that our loving Father wants to be close to us. 
He wants to be close to us. Now, for some this morning, this is a revelation that God wants to be close to you. It's awesome, but He does. But something has blocked that truth in your life. You know, you think, as soon as I say it, you're thinking, well, yeah, that might be for everybody, but it's, it's not for me. Some past experience or some issue with self-worth or I, I don't know, you'll, you'll probably know, or a wrong view of God, God is a punisher or something like that. But God is a loving Father who longs to be close to you. Now, don't take my word for it. Let me give you some scripture. If you're going to do life group this week, jot these down and have a wee think on them. James chapter 4 verse 7 says this, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8, come near to God, and he will come near to you. It's not an if or a but, it's a fact that if you come near to him, he will come near to you. He wants to come close to you. Psalm 145 verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Wow. Now, just in case you think it depends on your mood or your attractiveness, it's absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's to do with him. He loves you. And actually, he longs to get close to people that are the most brokenhearted. There's a wonderful verse in Psalm 34, verse 18, which has been a tremendous help many years in pastoral ministry. I, I can't tell you how many thousands of people I've prayed this prayer with and brought this verse to. It's beautiful. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He saves the crushed in spirit. So, you can't get further away from feeling that God wants to come close to me than being crushed if you feel, it's a horrendous word, isn't it? Feeling crushed in spirit or brokenhearted. You see, when you're brokenhearted or crushed, that's all the more attractive to God. He comes near to those who are brokenhearted and crushed in spirit. So, I hope you're feeling encouraged by this. God wants to get close to you and make it easy for you to keep in step with Him. So, how do we get close to God? How do we nurture that close walk with God's Holy Spirit? Well, first, it's about faith. Faith that permeates our mindset first and then our actions. You see, if you don't believe that God wants to bless you, you're cutting yourself off from that. You have to believe that God wants to bless you in order for Him to get close to you. Uh, Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, without faith, that's believing that, you know, that God is, wants to be close, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him, here we go, must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Hear that there? So, that's the first thing. We have to get a mindset which says, if I get close to God, if I chase after Him, he is there, and He is willing to help and to strengthen me, and he will, he will reward me because I earnestly seek Him. Wow. This is God's Word speaking this. This is not just a wee encouragement from me. If you earnestly seek Him, you will find Him, and He will be close to you. So, how, how do we do that? I just want to give some practicals. Here are three very practical ways in which we can come close to God. Some of these will seem obvious, and the third one I want to dig into in a wee bit uh, further. So, the first is this, practically set time aside to worship Him. You know that as a church, we set out in our vision statement that the very first thing we want to do is to honor God. We want to put first things first. That's why all of our prayer meetings, all of our gatherings, all of our business meetings, all of our staff meetings, all of our online prayer things and all that, uh, 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 Fresh Encounter, which we have on the first Wednesday, deliberately, of every month, we are saying first things first. We want to honor you, God, and we want to worship you. And we, I'm encouraging you, dear friends, need to do that in our own lives. You see, it's so easy to think, oh, I need to have my prayer time. I've got 15 minutes before I have to get the bus or whatever. Yeah, which is good, but we rush into our prayer time and we expect God to reveal things to us. We, we expect God to speak to us, and He will. We expect a big download in that 14 minutes that we're giving Him, but we don't worship Him. Or we go in that 14 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever, and we've got a, you might be more holy than me, and you might have an hour and a half, I don't know, uh, but it, it becomes a big list of things. We've got a list of things that we need to pray about, and that's good. We have a list of things we need to pray about, but we have to put, if we want to get close to the Holy Spirit, we want to walk in step with Him. The first thing we have to do is we have to worship Him. 
Okay, and if you've never done this before, or you need a fresh way of going about it, I find it extremely helpful to use good worship music. And what I mean by good worship music is there's good worship music and there's unhelpful worship music. Okay, and this is another sermon, right? But good worship music is, is worship music in, to me that puts words in my mouth which are about Christ. So when I'm singing words uh, or I'm listening to words and singing along kind of thing, I want worship to be things that are addressed towards God. I don't need words that tell me I'm a worm. I don't need words that tell me, you know, I'm, I'm the worst person that ever lived, but God is good. I, that I don't want those words in my mouth. The words I want in my mouth are, God, you are good. You're precious. You're kind. You're glorious. All of those kind of things. You know, um, my favorite one at the moment is a song called Honey in the Rock. If you don't know if you've heard that, if you haven't heard it, go on YouTube, find it. It's a beautiful reflection on the journey of the Israelites through the desert when God produced honey from a rock, uh, honey from stone, water from a rock, and manna. It's just beautiful worship because it puts in my mouth that God is good, open handed, and kind to his people. But if you want to get close to God and uh, be in step with him, you have to first worship him. Secondly, you have to listen for his voice. And that is, you know, through his word and in prayer and in occasions such as this and, and in life group and all the rest of it. But we have to get ourselves in front of God in a listening pose. I find that so often I get into my prayer time, I do my worship a bit and all the rest of it, and then I'm eager to tell God where he's going wrong, right? And all the things that he should be doing right and here is my list and da, da, da as opposed to getting into a position where God can really speak to me through His Word and, you know, directly. I, I've never heard an audible voice of God, but I know that when we live a life where we walk close to God and we keep in step with Him, uh, we, He speaks to our spirit. He, he, he tells us things. We, he te- I mean, the, the prayer that we had earlier, he, te- he reveals to us secret things that He has planned for our lives and for the lives of others. And you think, wow, that's bonkers, that's wild. Yeah, it is. It is bonkers that the God of the universe would speak to us. But you'll only speak if we're listening. I love Samuel, uh, where the child Samuel, you know, thinks he hears God. And Eli very wisely says, look, I'll tell you what, just go back to bed. And if you hear the voice of God again, just say, Lord, your servant is listening. Uh, what a beautiful prayer that is for us to own. Could you own that prayer today, tomorrow, worship and then the next thing you say after worship, you know, God, you're amazing, you're wonderful. Uh, Lord, speak, your servant is listening. I'm putting a zip over my mouth right now. I want to hear your voice. And I'll guarantee that if you invite him to speak to you, he will speak to you. And I'll give you a couple of examples in a minute if we have got time. But uh, I, I personally find it helpful to journal. You know, I've got a lot of books. I've got books going back 20 years. When uh, they're, they're, I mean, they're not going to be published ever, ever. But they're, but they're interesting just to, when you think you hear God's voice, write it down. Because then you've got something you can go and check with good Christian people. Just capture what he's saying to you. Weigh it up. And then number three, and this is the one I want to just major on for a few minutes, is live a life of obedience. Basically, obey him. Okay. So you get this little flow, we're going to worship him, we're going to listen to his voice, and then we're going to obey him. You see, the thing is, if Jesus says to do something and you don't do it, why would he talk to you again? Well, he would, because he's kind and he's loving and he's graceful and stuff like that. But if you want to hear the voice of God leading you and directing you, you need to say yes to the things that he says to you. Now, I'm not sure that when you start this that you're going to get a world-changing massive thing to do. My experience is that this is a trust thing that has grown in my life over many years. So you start saying yes to little things, and then God will entrust bigger things to you. I'm absolutely sure of it. Uh, Early in my Christian life, I had Pastor Youngie Cho say that the secret of his life in God was this. It's simple. He said, I pray and I obey. And that really struck me. I was only about 17 or 18 at the time, and I'm thinking, why? Honestly, I genuinely said in my heart and to the Lord, I'm going to do that. I'm going to pray, and I have prayed nearly every day since then, and I'm going to obey you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Obviously, I'm going to check it out and all of that stuff, but I'm going to do, primarily, my heart is to do what you tell me to do. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll sing what you want me to sing. I'll dance what you want me to dance. 
Um, maybe not. Maybe not the dancing thing, but the, the, there we go. That you know, dancing. Yeah. Anyway, Eric Little said this. Uh, you know, he of um, Chariots of Fire fame said this: obedience to God's will is the secret of spiritual knowledge and insight. It is not willingness to know, but willingness to do, to obey God's will that brings certainty. I love that. Don't you? So you hear that you feel the challenge that's here. It's not just about listening, but it is about doing. And I found that when we do that, checking what you're listening against, all the things I've said, the parameters, it's the greatest joy that we can have in our lives is to know that we are in step with God's Spirit and we are doing what He has asked us to do. You see, the temptation is to think this is a massive test that I'm putting before you. It's not a massive test. It's a gateway to massive joy. It's a gateway to massive and massive life, enjoyment, and satisfaction. Because when you're doing what God has planned for you to do, there can't be a better place to be. There, there, honestly, there, there, there can't be. And I say that to everybody, whether you're a Christian or not. You get yourself in line with God's plans for you, and you it's not a test. It's a sheer, sheer joy. So when we get to our place of prayer, we're saying, precious Jesus, I've listened to you all my life. And so far, I've obeyed your voice. Would you speak to me again? It's a choice. I want to walk in step with you today, Holy Spirit. Lead me on, and I mean it. You know, I add that at the end of your prayer. You know, I want to obey you, and I mean it. Because when I say that to my heart, I, I, I just think of all the adventures that I could get you into. Now, I could literally speak now for many hours about all the adventures that that saying yes to Jesus has got me into. It's got me into some proper scrapes and uh, all sorts of funny things. Um, but let me just give you a few examples just by way of encouragement. I remember a few years ago, I, I was speaking at a conference and uh, I was uh, sat at the front just like here uh, and the worship team was going for it big time and I was next. So when they finished, I was to get up and, and, and preach. And I was just sat there minding my own business. And then I, I, I sensed the Holy Spirit say to me, okay, I want you to abandon the opening that you've got written down that I'd spent months planning. And I want you to get up and I want you to say somebody, this was all in like a split second to my heart. I want you to say somebody here it feels like they're sleeping beauty. And I've got a message from God for you that he wants to give you that, you know, the sleeping beauty story. He wants to give you that kiss that's going to wake up your spiritual life. And I'm thinking, no way, Jose. <laughs> There's absolutely no. And I was sat there. This is all the worship bands getting to the final bridging chorus. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. I can't say that. What, what, my reputation. I can't say that. I can't say that. I can't say that. Okay, I give in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get up to my feet and I say it. And the minute I said it, there was deafening, I mean, really loud sobs from a woman on the back row. She started pouring her heart out. She was sobbing. Anyway, the people around her started to pray. And she, what she testified was that during the last chorus of the worship, the Lord had said to her, actually, I, I, I know the woman's name, but you're like sleeping beauty. You once were awake, and, but your spiritual life's been dead. So imagine how her heart was affected by there. Now, does that happen every single time? No. But it happens when you culture a position of listening and obeying. And I just think, if I had not obeyed that simple thing, although it was a bit bizarre, what would have happened? I don't know. But she came back to faith and was fully strong from that moment on. It was wonderful. Another example is even simpler than that. Um, on a Friday, when we lived in uh, Peterborough, on a Friday afternoon, about half past two, Heather and I uh, always have a, a date at that point, which is our really busy weeks, frenetic running, we're all over the place during the weeks, you know, working in two different jobs, and all, blah, 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 blah. But at half past two, every Friday, we meet in a cafe just around the corner from our house uh, in a little village, and we had coffee and a cake to, uh, to celebrate and to initiate the beginning of our 24-hour Sabbath rest. And we wouldn't do any work in that 24 hours. I mean, we just did it, not religiously, but we did it by pattern every single day. And we still do. So, uh, anyhow, we uh, went to the cafe. I was there a few minutes earlier. And then Heather, Heather came in. We ordered coffee. We blah, 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 blah. And we were chatting away. And anyway, I was completely distracted um, because there was a guy over in the corner. I didn't know his name or anything like that. 
but I felt the Holy Spirit say to you, I want you to go over to the guy, give him your mobile number, and invite him to dinner. I was like, what? You, I'm saying to Heather, but she's saying, oh, well, if you think that's what you should do, you, I, I'm not thinking it's what I should do. I think I'm sensing that from. Anyhow, so I wrote my mobile number on a scrap of paper, a napkin, and I went over and I said, I know this is going to sound really weird, but my wife and I were, were over there having a cup of tea, and um, I just sensed uh, we would love to invite you to come around to our house for a meal on Tuesday. And he started crying. And he said, wow, that's, it. that's amazing. He said, because I lost my wife two weeks ago and I haven't been out of the house. This is the first time I've been out. I've got nobody to talk to, no friends, nowhere to go. And I said, well, you're welcome to come around. He came around to our house on a Tuesday. Turns out that he, he knew Heather's sister um, and all of this kind of stuff. So there was a, there was a connection there and we were able to hand him on. Uh, past. And to think, well, what if I hadn't done that? you know, those kind of things. Oh, in the coffee shop, just listen. God, uh, who do you want to bless through me today? Who, who, what do you want me to do? And I will obey you if you tell me. I'll, I will obey. I will do it. That you start small and God may lead to bigger things in your life. It is such a beautiful, wonderful place to be. It's to live in step with God's Spirit and God's plans. I encourage you to step closer to Him it, this is nurtured in private and exercised in public. So just get in there and ask. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful gift from God. Uh, yesterday, uh, Heather and I and the leadership uh, team, there was about 25 of us or something like that, we had uh, a retreat morning together. Prophet Clem Ferris come along for part of that time and he had been preparing a, a little message, which was great and encouraging, but then he had some prophetic words for us uh, as individuals, but also for us as a church. Now, I would love to read it out to you, but when it got transcribed, it's 22 A4 pages long, so it's a book. It's not something we can just read out here, but let me give you the general gist of it. God is doing something bigger than us, than even all of us all put together. God is doing something bigger than all of us, and that's not an exclusive thing, it's an inclusive thing. He has graced us with the opportunity to reach our city, pray God to reach our nation in one way or another. How that's going to happen, there was a few clues there, but we don't really know just yet. But if God speaks, we worship Him, we listen, and God speaks to us, there's only one thing we can do, which is obey. Now, God is doing something. And this is what I sensed uh, as a kind of combining of the message I'd prepared for yesterday and what was going on yesterday, is that for God to do what God wants us to do, however big or however small that will be, it requires that every one of us gets in step with the Spirit. It's not something that the leaders can do. We need all of us in step. Go back to that marching analogy at the beginning, boom, boom, left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, we can, you could be thinking, you're mistaken for thinking that my marching is all about me, left, right. And of course, there's an element of that you want to get left and right, but it's actually about the whole group, isn't it? There's, I mean, it looks amazing, doesn't it, when there's hundreds of people marching perfectly in step. It creates a rhythm, it creates a power, it creates a movement. And I'm, I'm speaking that out just right now as, I, as I'm speaking, this is live. I, I pray, God, would you make us a movement? You know, like, just get us all keeping in step with your spirit so that as a whole congregation of people, we are in a position to do what you want us to do. Now, I, for one, am prepared to say, God, if you've spoken, I want to obey. What about you? What about those of you who are watching online? I, I want to obey, and I mean it. And so I'm going to conclude this message, conclude this series. I'm going to ask the worship team to come back and just kind of pick up that. There's a, there was a lovely prayer that we prayed right at the beginning of the service, those of us who were here know, and, and the prayer was this, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come and fill.